name's T. Howard, head basketball coach, assistant football coach at Edna Carr High School, and you're watching the Fame Food Podcast. Our facilities across the board can't even compare to the high school facilities in Texas. No, indeed. Or Damn close. George, you know, so that is a big issue for us. Now, I also think this, that the people in Texas or, or the people in Georgia, they know that's important for our kids, so they make sure their kids have that. I just don't think down here, I don't want to say our administrators, but our our top dogs Bessie. don't think that's important. So they don't put that into our schools, in which I think if they do that, then that'll keep a lot of our kids off the streets. Because like you said, kids, they, 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 they see all that. They mesmerize by all that. You know what I'm saying? Just think, I'm not about to go, the old gym at car, I'm not about to go. You want me to practice in here every day for three, four hours a day, no heat. <laughs> the, the 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 bleachers are wooden. Right. You know, I ain't about to do that. Now, fortunate in a new school, we got two nice gyms, you know, two nice gyms, and our kids stay in the gym. We back, back at it again. Fan View Podcast, y'all already know what it is. I'm that boy Fred. G Sports back at it. Coach Hurricane Hen back at it again, and again, and again. <laughs> you all over the place. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. This is Fan View Podcast. Listen, get subscribed, get locked in. If you're on Fan View Podcast, it'll be on YouTube. If you're on Fan View Podcast on Facebook, it's Fan View Podcast. If you're on IG, Fan View Podcast on TikTok, and we still Fan View Nola. If you on X. We evolving, baby. We growing. Y'all already know what it is. We got another special guest, G Sports. No doubt. Why don't you introduce our guest? Edna Carr. I mean, he was a lot of different hats. So when I say this, I know this is not the typical um, introduction when you introduce introducing a, a coach, right? He's the athletic director, mm-hmm. head basketball coach, mm-hmm. defensive mm-hmm. coordinator, mm-hmm. life mentor, mm-hmm. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. At the Edna Carr High School in Algiers, Taurus Howard in the building, man. Come and fill a show with us on the yes. Fan View co- Podcast, man. I, T, appreciate you coming on the Fan View Podcast, man. I know y'all just started spring. Getting ready to get back on that journey, man, to try to get back to Gay G. Right? Because <laughs> I ain't been there in a couple years now. I ain't been in a couple years. So I know y'all hungry to make it back there, man, and, and make that Algiers community proud. But... We always like to start our fan view podcast off talking about your journey, bro. Uh, I know you grew up uptown, transition to the West Bank. Some of y'all say that's the best bank. Of course it is. Right? Damn, man. That's what it is, man. I wouldn't know nothing about that. Of course. Try Paris. (laughs) But uh, take me back, bro. Growing up uptown, uh, and when did you fall in love with the game of basketball? Because for y'all that don't know, Played at Nickel State under the legendary Ricky Broussard. Mm-hmm. Played in the NCAA tournament. And we'll get into all of that. But uh, just bring us back, bro, to your childhood and when you fell in love with the game of basketball and the game of football, for that matter. Right. And, and how it's propelled you in your life to where you at today. Um, first of all, thank you guys for having me. Oh, on absolutely. Um, you know, I grew up, like she said, I grew up uptown. Uh, little skinny, little child. Uh, you know, Took a liking to sports, you know. Mm-hmm. My friends played played at Shakespeare Park, mm-hmm. played football, basketball. <laughs> Back then, you ain't had no choice. You had to play. You had to play. You had to play. There ain't no options. Whether you could play or not, whether you was big enough, whether you you know make it outside. Short. They made you play, you know. And I guess that was the coaches that were over us. I guess that was that was their way of Electrics. keeping us off the street. Uh, right. Keeping us busy. I would, mm-hmm. Let's say that. Keeping us busy, you know. Um, right. So, you know, we played at Shakespeare. I played basketball. I've been playing since I was eight, nine years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, played football as well. A lot of people don't know that. Mm-hmm. Played football. Uh, played quarterback. Uh, you look like a quarterback. Played quarterback up until mm-hmm. my ninth grade, mm-hmm. going into my ninth grade year. 
You know, that's when I made the transition from Tumula Phone Elementary School to Edna College, at, junior high. Right, at right back that time. Transition to high school. Um, the, the 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 last year before I went there, I had broke my collarbone. I was like, man, look, that's it. And how old? I was like, <laughs> I was like 12, 13. Good Lord. You know, I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm going to just see what this round ball do. Because you know that <laughs> car. The car junior high team looked like a high school team. Right. Yeah. Right. So I was like, well, if they broke me up on the park, I don't know if you can imagine what they're going to do. When it's I on that matter of time. <laughs> but, like, gave me my decision to just stick with basketball. Uh, and now um, my Nord coach, which was Coach Rob. Everybody let the know. Nord. Coach Rob. Yep. And Coach Rob back at Coach Rock, uh, they started the Edna Car basketball program. Mm. Um, so when I got there at ninth grade, we only had 10th grade. So, you know, that was, I was like in cahoots with them to start our basketball. Right. Our high school program. We had a good junior high program. And two, three years later, it worked out. You know, we ended up winning the state championship my senior year. Um, and like G said, I got a scholarship to attend Nickel State mm-hmm. University. This is back in what, 94? 94. I graduated mm-hmm. 94. Went to Nickel State University. Had mm-hmm. a wonderful career. We made it to the tournament twice. Uh, we won the Solomon Conference twice. Of course, in that league, you got to win the conference. To get to the yeah. Right. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, um, that was a good uh, experience for me, you know. That was right. a good experience. Um, put, put your mic a little closer. There you go. Don't we, be afraid. There you go. We, uh, my coaches with that still in me kind of like gave me the niche like I want to be a coach as well. Ooh. So even before I finished playing, I knew I was going to be a coach. You right. Know what I'm saying? It, it didn't matter what level if I had to coach some you know, teams, but I was fortunate enough to go back to my old high school and coach under the coaches that coached me. So that's why I'm in that position. And, you know, they gave me the keys to the car, man. You know, so I'm I'm forever indebted to them, to Coach Rob and Coach Rock for trusting me with the program. Even uh, the 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 ex-principal, Mr. Haas, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. Young guy, they gave me a chance, you know. So, you know, that's, that's my love. That's my passion, coaching, man, especially – Basketball and football. Now, Cullis became a Mercedes Benz over 30 years now. <laughs> Rolling. Yep. But let, let's talk about basketball, man. Um, Like your journey, like you mentioned, in the high, at the high school level. Like what made you – obviously you had the injury in football, but what are some of the things that gravitated that you were skilled for at basketball? Like what are some of the things you did well? Um, To be honest with you, my, my, my peers, when I, when I first started out, the peers are the, are the, are the guys I grew up around, the Sertans, uh, the White Anderson's. Right. Those guys were better than me. You know, they were better than me when we first started out. You know, So even though we was the same age, same grade, mm-hmm. that, they were a little better than me. So that kind of like, man, listen, I'm, listen, I'm about to be, I'm about to work and be, you know, I want to be good like be, them. Yeah, they, were, they were my role models. They didn't even know it. You know, they were my role models. So, um, you know, I would watch them. You know, even Randy Livingston. I saw Randy Livingston yeah. on here one time. Mm-hmm. You know. Randy was, was that like guy the, back then. Yeah, he was like the best thing in the state when he was, you know. He wasn't 12, even close. 13, 14, 15. <laughs> McDonald's All-American. Yeah. So those guys kind of paved the way for me, you know. So the, the work ethic the work ethic they had, you know. So I, I developed that, you know, because I, I wasn't the, the tallest. I wasn't the most fit, you know, I was a skinny kid, you know, um, at a little height, you know, so I quick, I quickly understood that hard work was going to be evident for me to make this right. journey, you know, um, and to this day, I kind of like try to pass that on to my players, you know, I don't care how good you are, you know what I'm saying? If you don't put in the work, then it don't you know, you'll never reach your potential, mm. you know, so. The, the, the passion I have for basketball, it came through the hard work, you know. And then the gratification at the end with the state championship, was able to get a basketball scholarship, was able to go to the tournament, you know, all that. It brings you back to all those long hours and long days in the gym where you're working on your game, where you're working on your staff, where you're working on your conditioning. 
it, it, it paid off for me. So, so that's why I'm so hard on my kids about it because it works. And, you know, it works. Well, first of all, I'm not going to let G slide with the uh, introduction without mentioning that you're part of the greatest fraternity that oh, God has ever created. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know I, I'm not going to let G slide with that. My fault. <laughs> but man, T, you, um, with you doing multiple sports going, going into high school and now in this day and age, you see parents kind of try to like steer kids to, one one specialty, one sport, and by you coaching both both football and basketball, how big of it is it for you to have your kids play multiple sports? Not discourage them to 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 go uh, like just pick one route and just excel and let their passion find them. To be honest, at Carr, it was a big deal. You know, even in junior high, because in junior high, I guess that's where it came from. In junior high, the football players play basketball. Mm-hmm. Now, you may have had one or two kids, or you know, that just play basketball. Right, right. But those kids that play football play basketball. So that model followed us to the high school level. My senior year, we had like five kids that play basketball. Mm-hmm. We have five kids that play football. You know, we combine, you know. So that's been our niche in car cuz a lot of a lot of coaches or other other guys be like, "Coach, how y'all do that cuz I hear it all the time. Coach the football coach don't want to let them play basketball. Yeah, basketball yeah. coach don't want to let them play football. Yep. Frank Wilson a lot at that old prayer walk. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it out there. <laughs> I just think that's just I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it, especially if the kid wants to play. Mm-hmm. You know, especially if he wants to play. Um, I, I know in ba- I know basketball wise, the 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 aggressiveness or or the or the uh, toughness, the toughness, and all that that you have to have in football. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you don't have to have it in basketball, but it's a different kind because it's physical. Right, right. It's a real physical game, and you know, basketball can can be that. You know, so. When you, you know, and all teams, you got, it's like gumbo. You know what I'm saying? You got the sizes, you got the, you got the crabs, you got, you right. got all these ingredients that make the gumbo really, really good. So that's kind of like the vision we have in all our sports, to be honest with you, especially basketball. Mm-hmm. I, I want, to be honest with you, I think we need football players to be successful or to have a successful year in basketball, mm-hmm. you know, because they bring a certain kind of toughness which you're going to need when, when you get down to those semifinal games and those quarterfinal games. You know, mm-hmm. this year we lost in the quarterfinal game, mm-hmm. um, you know, against uh, a really good team. You know, we had to go on the road. We were up by like five or six points. And at the end, four or five minutes, we just wasn't tough. And I'm not saying the kids weren't tough or they didn't try to be, but you just didn't have that. That physicality, dog, that, 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 that physicality, that physicality. Nobody to look to to be like, let's go do it, you know. So, um, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. You know, what I'm saying like I even go on, on record to say I think you need football players on the high school level to be successful in basketball. You know, unless you got LeBron James, right, right, right. You know, right. If right. you got if you got that five star recruit, yeah, yeah, you got Lamar Peters yeah. or something like that. Yeah, so, I, I'm for that. Every day of the week. Talk about that experience playing in the NCAA tournament, not only once, but twice. That's not common, especially at a small school like a Nichols in the Southland Conference. You might be lucky to play in one. Y'all played Arizona. I remember watching that game. I think I was in the A grade. Miles Simon, Mike Bibby, mm. Luke Olsen. They won a national championship that yeah. year. And I think your freshman year, y'all played Virginia. You talk about that experience, man, playing in that tournament setting and then watching it today and seeing the March Madness and, and what you went through, especially playing against a great player like Mike Bibby and Miles Simon. My freshman year, like you said, we played against Virginia. Uh, and to be honest with you, I, I can't remember, but I want to say we probably was a... I think y'all was like a 14 seed. Yeah. Yeah. It was a 14 seed or something like that. And we played Virginia with uh, Staples. Uh, and I forget... Curtis Staples. Saw. 
I forget the two guard they had was Dickinson? really good. No, that was for Arizona. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Michael Dickinson. But I forget, but but they were really good. And to be honest with you, we had a chance. You know, we were right there with them. I think we ended up losing by like maybe eight or nine. But as a freshman, you know, I played about total about maybe five, six, seven minutes, you know. So I was still in awe. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. Saying, oh, this, right. You know, you you growing up as a kid, you know, you watch the tournament. So I was in awe. You know, you we, we went to uh I forgot where we went. But anyway, we flew there, you know what I'm saying? How they how they roll the red carpet out for mm-hmm. you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm like, I'm all the way in the back now. You know, <laughs> you know the the main guys in the front, so I'm just following, but you know, you you feel like superstars, you know. Um then when you get to the game, you, you, oh my God, all these people here, you know, to see us play. 20,000 people in here. You know, so it was, it was a real experience for us, you know, so, um, you know, we ended up losing, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, we had a chance, but not the next year, but the, the, the next year, my junior year, we had it, we made it to the tournament. This time we was a 16th seed, you know, mm-hmm. um, and we played against Arizona. The, Champions, they right. Said, you know, they yes, were, you know, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It was so low, you know. Anderson was on that team from Saint Paul. Mm-hmm. He pitch, he didn't even start. Pitcher, uh, Russell Westbrook. No, not Russell. No, Westbrook. not Russell Westbrook. Ooh, arenas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give, give, give. yeah that, that, he's give. Show. So he was a freshman on that team, I think. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even start. That's yeah. how good they were. Yeah. Um, so if Gil was on that team, I think Channing Fry had to be on that team too. Yeah. All of them. They were. They were. They were That's crazy. Yeah, about Three seven footers, you know. I want to say about five or six of those guys went to the NBA. Right. You know? I know so Gilbert they, did and Bibby did. Yeah, they were really really good, man. Um, but that that experience it was a different experience because we went away to California. Mm-hmm. You know, um, played the number one seed. They were favored to win the the championship, so everybody was there. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking they had to see the game, but they had to see these future NBA players. Yep. Um, you know, nevertheless. They jumped out on us. They kicked out with butter or whatever, but it still, it still was an experience, you know? Um, and like you say, guys go through college. You know, I, I, I went to Nickel State. I didn't expect to go to the NCAA tournament. I'll tell you that. But for me to go twice. Right. You know, that's unheard of. You know, that's a story I could tell my nine year old son when he get up there, you know, when he start talking about that, I'll share that with my players, you know? Um, um but like I said, man, I've been blessed, man. I, I've been truly blessed to to have those experiences. And all I could do is try to share with my kids to kind of push them, you know, to go to college. And then you played with a pro, with Gerard King. Mm-hmm. Got mm-hmm. drafted by the Spurs. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know how many years he played, but nevertheless, you played with a pro. Talk about playing with somebody at a small school like Nichols that made the lead in, in the NBA. And did you think he was a pro when you was playing with him? No. Right. <laughs> right. I know. It's I am not saying he wasn't good. I'm I know what you're saying. It's yeah. the fact yeah. that we played at Nickel State. You know, when you see guys go to the NBA, they come from Duke. They come from Carolina. Yep. They come from Arizona. You don't see nobody coming come from Nickel mm-hmm. State. So that that's the only reason why I didn't think he worked. You know, was a pro. You know, right. what I'm saying? we had another guy on the team named Reggie Jackson. I I thought I think he played a little pro ball a little bit. Um, but. He was good, man. And watch this. Hard worker, man. Hard, hard, hard worker. So you could go in the gym. He was the first to, first person in the gym. He was the last person to leave the gym. You know, it's unfortunate that he had a career in the injury that kind of like right. his NBA career, you know. But, you know, shout out to him. You know, he made it, you know. Right. And he went to McDonald's 35, right? The McDonald's 35. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, I ran into Ricky Broussard and Lafayette a couple weeks ago, and he told me the story. I, how he got Gerard yeah. King to come to niggas. I'm like, how you got this dude? He said his grandmother. Because I forgot. <laughs> <it's, it's, laughs> that that was the whole key to, to the process of getting him to Nichols. Yeah. He said grandma. he got to the grandmother and the grandma had all the influence. For, for the life of me, I was thinking La Tech. And then you like, like I forget, yeah, he did play at Nichols. That, yeah. that's, that's, that's crazy. He's 16? Yep, 16. Yeah. Yeah. And, and listen, it's funny how I got the Nichols. The, the Coach Broussard, no, it wasn't Coach Broussard. It was Coach Hippolyte. It was assistant coach at the time. Coach Hippolyte was on that staff? He was a, he was He's a dude. I was born when I was in high school. Yeah. That's my dude. <laughs> they came. We had a big guy that played that car about six, seven. Mm. So they was coming to see him. You know, they come to watch him practice. We practicing. You know what I'm saying? The coach was like this. 
who is the little skinny kid right there? You know what I'm saying? Talk, talk, talk. Well, listen, we want to offer him. And, and, you know, and that's how I got. That's how you got there. Got there, you know what I'm saying? And like I tell my kids, you never know who's watching. Yep. You know, I'm a firm believer that, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, uh, and, uh, and that's when my, my recruiting kind of picked up. You know what I'm saying? It kind of picked up. And watch this. I went to them because they was the first person off. You were showing some loyalty. The first person that offered me. So I, Nobody I, else was thinking about so it. So what are the schools you had on the table? Magnese offered me. Um, they had a school in Virginia offered me. I can't remember that a school in Alabama or a little D2 school. But I, I ended up having about maybe five or six schools offered me. You know, mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, I went to Nickel State because they offered me first. first. So, and back then, and I think this is a essential point that I'm about to make. The AAU circuit wasn't as prevalent as it is now. No. So, like back then, you actually got recruited off of what you did in, on your high school team versus what you did in the summer. Correct. 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 And I and we we play AAU, but you know we didn't have social media, we didn't right. have Instagram, they didn't have circuits like that. No, I say the circuit wasn't as big and all that. Yeah. Circuit. When we play AAU, I'm talking about it was you get your twelve teams and we went at it. We <laughs> That's went what I'm at saying. It in the gym. Hot it, gyms. it ain't like that no more. No. It, it's but right, I, I do right. want to ask you this question, Coach, and I want to ask it to everybody really here. I remember my era of high school basketball. We always had a guy. It didn't matter whether it was Hollis Price, whether it was Chris Duhon, whether it was Brandon Bass, Danny we, Granger, Danny Granger. I mean, we could start talking about. We always had a kid that symbolizes, you know, Louisiana State basketball. Somebody who's gonna be a part of what we call like McDonald's All American. But as of recently. We don't really see that with a lot of high school basketball players. What are some of the things you think is contributing to Louisiana not having that five star or McDonald's American player that we consistently used to have in the past? I, I think they're there. They're still there. Our kids are just faced with faced with so many other distractions. Distractions. You know they 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 want to hang here. They want to do this. They want to do that. They they see other ways. To get money or, or to be or to get out, they ain't using the athletic route. You know they want to. It's it's like they're gonna miss something. You know what I'm saying? I, the kids are still there. You know? but I'm saying the athletes are still there. They still there. But I, I remember as a kid, man, whether it was we looking up to me, looking up to Bo, me looking up to Duhan Price. Even after I graduated, still following guys like um Greg Monroe. Greg Monroe. For them, Taz, Taz, DJ Augustine. DJ Augustine. I was still following these guys. Like, man, they still had he next up. He next up. It just in the current basketball, high school basketball, Louisiana. I don't notice that kid. That kid is not pre- prevalent around Louisiana basketball. The last person I could think of right now in my head is Javante Smart. I said he was nah, next up. And, well, and I've said there's a number. Of, I said there's a number of times. I know you could attest to this because you experienced this. A lot of times when them kids get good down here, especially when they're young, they move away. They go to a prep school somewhere or they move to Texas or they move to Atlanta or they move to Vegas or oh, they yeah. move somewhere far out because they think they can't get they, the exposure here. Oh, De'Aaron Fox. Because you, what, Farron Hunt. <laughs> yeah. Remember Farron yeah. Hunt? Big Kyrie. Yeah. Maximilian. Maximilian. Maximilian, yeah. You know what I mean? You done had some kids that came through your program that moved away because they people thought that Going away was going to get them where they needed to get to. And and I just think, it's funny you say that. I just think the parents think you have to do that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, the, the parents don't believe in, man, just work, man. Yep. Just work, just just get in there and work. Because watch this. If if you get in there and work and you reach your potential, they're going to find you. Yep. Right, straight up. They're going to find you. Go play behind this building right here. They're going to find you. <laughs> Facts. But the parents, they, they, they just, they just don't, they just, they just want their kids to just have it easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and we all know easy don't last long. Nope. Yeah. No, it don't. It don't. Hard do. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I think to like, to answer your question, like, I think yeah. with T and G said kind of marries each other, I think it goes down to discipline. And the stigma, the stigma of Louisiana, and let's face it, we 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 all this is what mm-hmm. we do. Football pays the bills. Just like hey, if you if you if you want to if you want to make music in 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 New Orleans, you better start off and bounce. Mm-hmm. 
you know, if you want to be successful, it just it's the it's the stigma. But the all of kids that we named before, they wasn't moving away. They one, they didn't have a choice to move away. Two, yeah. they people wasn't Where's gonna let in? nobody. Yeah, and they, and they people like I love y'all dearly. If G was in Texas, was in Indiana, and my son could hoop. I'm not at back then. I wasn't sending my kid with G to to, to get Indiana's a basketball state. He's gonna stay here, grind it out, mm-hmm. and whatever happens, I, happens. I can understand that. that. I think that's the biggest reason they running away because the parents, like like we always say, the the, the biggest dream killers. They yep. hey, let's get out here because this is what they do. Instead of, do you know how how special it would be if you the one that they talk about in a fo- in a football heavy state. They talking about you, the basketball player. They ain't talking about the number one recruit in football that's right here. They talking about you, the McDonald's All-American. It's like we got a before Katrina and after Katrina effect. Like before Katrina, we had a lot of statewide basketball players that were what we consider McDonald's All-Americans. Now after Katrina, when people got divided and dispersed out and a lot of people didn't come back, we're not seeing that same effect in basketball. We know football is the brave one in this state. It always has been, and it's not going to stop. But we always seem to have high school kids that are always tapped into basketball. And it's not like we've seen that effect on a high school basketball level. We've not seen that that kid. We're like, dang, that kid is the next one up. Right. He's going to affect. Back. And other kids gravitate to want to compete against that kid or that team that was on. Like, man, you know what? We're trying to beat Selma. You know what I mean? We're trying to beat this school. We're trying to beat this school. You don't really. I'm not really observing that in high school basketball. So I'm thinking it's maybe taking some effect in Louisiana basketball. Like, it's it's hurting it. Let me let me pick it back on Fred because you actually are an administrator at school, so so you would get where I'm about to come with. Do you think the allocation the allocation of resources is one of the things that's kind of like hindering? Because like you always see a school like they might get a new turf, new new um track around the fit, like everything catered toward the outside sports, but you hardly have, unless you like the Madison preps, the Peabody's, so where like at your school, basketball is king. You don't see an updated gym. You don't see like the, the, in, the like indoor, you, indoor sports. The, you don't see the facilities to like, to like, and you know, especially with these kids these days, they are attracted by the facilities and all that stuff first before they look into what the actual program is. First of all, the hurricane did kind of like set us back a little because mm-hmm. when people, kids dispersed, scattered in them. there, and they see this gym that seek 5,000 people, they see this with two gyms, they see, you know what I'm saying? So they're like, damn. Yeah, and I come back and see Higgins. Boy, I'm not coming back to this. Right, you know, so I agree with that. Our facilities across the board can't even compare to the high school facilities in Texas. No, indeed. Uh, Not close. George, you know, so that is a big issue for us. Now, I also think this, that the people in Texas or or the people in Georgia, they know that's important for our kids, so they make sure their kids have that. I just don't think down here, I don't want to say our administrators, but our our top dogs don't think that's important. So they don't put that into our schools in which I think if they do that then that'll keep a lot of our kids off the streets because like you said kids they 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 see all that they mesmerized by all that you know what I'm saying just think I'm not about to go the old gym at car I'm not about to go you want me to practice in here every day for three four hours a day no heat <laughs> the, the 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 bleachers are wooden right you know I ain't about to do that now fortunate in a new school we got two Nice gyms, you know, two nice gyms. And our kids stay in the gym. They stay in the gym. I can't run them out of there, you know. It's 8, 30, 9 o'clock. I'm like, man, y'all got to go home. All right, coach, 30 more minutes, you know. I guarantee you a lot of that is because. The new facility. The environment, you know. So yeah. You're correct about that. That attracts kids, you know. And parents. And so, parents. So, a lot of kids go through certain hurdles in their career, whether it's at college or high school, whatever the case may be, all pro. You told your ACL in college, right? Talk about what that did for you mentally and how you was able to overcome that. Not only that, T, 
you can't tell me you ain't think at one time you was going to the league. Right? Yeah. So how you was able to overcome a, a significant injury like that and still be able to be successful in life without playing a game of basketball at the pro level? Well, people don't. Well, I mean, what people don't know is that same year, uh, Halloween night, my, my father got killed. What? Whoa! You know what I'm saying? My father got killed. So, uh, no, no, I take it back. I told my ACL Halloween night. It was probably about a month prior to that. My father I got killed. You know, so you know it was a double layer whammy for me. Right. Um, Damn. Back to back. Back to back. That was your sophomore year my in college? Sophomore year, my second year in college. Ooh. Year. So, my coaches, man, my coaches, you know, my mom, um, they were there for me. You know, they was like, listen, you know, we know it's tragic, blah, blah, blah. You know, I stayed out of school for about a week, but, you know, they, they brought me back and I went back to school. You know, you just got to get over it, man. You know what? And probably where I grew up at, you know, it was a lot of misfortunes that happened, you know what I'm saying? So you 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 tend to just get over it, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it was on. So not only did my coaches teach me the game of basketball, but they taught me life, life. lessons. You know, they life. taught me life lessons. They told me like everything wasn't gonna be peaches and cream. They told me you was gonna get hurt. My freshman year, I'm coming from car. My junior, senior year, I played the whole game. I was the best player on the team, this and all that, blah, blah, blah. Then when you go to Nichols, you sitting on the bench. I'm like, oh, no, I, I, this, no, 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 this can't be me. I wanted to leave. No, you're not leaving. You're not leaving. You so gotta, you gotta your leave. high school coach, the coach Rob, coach Rock, yeah. and still it into, into you. You're not leaving. You're not leaving. That was like, You're not leaving. You're going to go back up there. You're going to work hard. You're going to bust your tail. And you're going to just see what happens. Oh, well, they were not going to hear you today in that transfer portal. You know, so, Boy, they out of there. <laughs> you know? So you just you just got to get over it, man. Stuff happens. And, and, and that was back then. A lot of that stuff didn't happen as normally as it's happening today. Right. 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 For our young kids. You know, it's tough for our young kids, man. They're friends. They're cousins. They this. Uh, this past weekend, a student at the school lost his life, you know. And and it, and we just we just keep going, you know what I'm saying? We just numb to it because it happens. It's repetitive, frequently, you know. Um, you know, but like I said, all we could do is we could just keep talking to our kids, keep trying to reach them, you know what I'm saying? Keep telling them, just listen to me, watch your surroundings, do this, do that. Don't hang with the wrong crowd, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's all they could do because at the end of the day, you can't be with them twenty four seven. Right? They got to make their own decisions. They got to trust what we're saying, and for the most part. Our kids do that, you know, for the most part, our kids do that. So that's what keeps us, you know, I can speak from other coaches. That's what keeps us going. You know, we're trying to show these kids, you know, it's an avenue. It's an avenue. It's a way to get out of the hot, the hood. You know what I'm saying? The success street is down there. You know, you just got to keep fighting, keep pushing, keep working hard. And, you know, that that's that's why I wake up every day. Right. You know, and come to work. Lo- losing your daddy that early on in your life. You say you, you know, you get numb to that kind of stuff, but as you, not at that, what that was over twenty years ago, right? Thirty, 30 years ago. Oof. Do you look back at it now and see how it impacted you as a man? It did, you know, it did. Cause it's tough, you know. I, I understand the fact that I lost, you know, my dad when I was like 17, 18 years old. I can understand that kid today that don't have that male figure in his life. I right. I'm saying right. that the seesaw, but you know, we have a lot of kids that don't right. have that male figure in mm-hmm. their life. So, you know, when those kids, when a situation arise, a kid had a fight or get disrespectful or whatever, I sit down, man, sit down, man. What's going on with you? You know, like. You can relate. You know, you, you talk to your dad. Go, John, I don't, I don't have no dad. So now I see where the anger is coming from. Right. I see where the disposition is coming from. I see where the disrespect is coming from because you're not being taught. Right. So now I can't take it personal if a kid gets disrespectful or, or whatever. I understand. Why. I understand so why. Now, okay, let's talk. I, I lost my dad too. So now you can see that kid like, okay, what happened? Blah, blah, blah. Tell him what happened. Here's what I did. 
had to get over it. You know what I'm saying? I had a strong mom. You know, I had I had coaches. You know what I'm saying? So show them that there are other people that can teach you mm-hmm. or that can be there for you. That they walk you know that light. Saying? You know, because, you know, I, I always tell people like, it's hard for a kid to grow up, especially in New Orleans, if they don't have a male figure or if they don't have that male figure they can trust, usually their dad. Right. You know, coach, I'm not listening to you. I don't have that. <laughs> I ain't got no daddy. I ain't got none of that. So that's tough for our kids, man. And we we, we experience a lot of that, you know, at car. I can't speak for other schools, but we experience a lot of that. So, you know, when people see the kids on the news or see us winning championships, they see the glitz and glam. But mm-hmm. they don't see the long nights that right. we're talking to kids or the dropping the them off at home stations or the rise home where we're trying to make sure they're straight mentally, you know, because they're coming from a, a dark place, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think it's safe to see if you wasn't playing sports and didn't have those type of coaches in your life and that had happened, no telling what direction you'd have went in. No telling. No. I, I don't even want to think about it. Be a downhill spiral. I don't even want to think from uptown too. Listen, my, my, it's an my uptown thing. Team, my North Little football team had about maybe 12, 13, 14 of us. I don't know. But I can say out of those maybe 15 kids, probably one or two of us are like successful. Damn. Right. The other ones are either deceased or in jail or not doing Damn. Anything, You know what I'm saying? For whatever reason. Whatever reason. You know? So that's why I'm blessed, man. I, I could have been in that number. For real. Man. I could have easily been in that number. Got a question Facts. for you, coach. Facts. When you're in the gym, who these kids modeling in the NBA? I'm talking about. Steph Curry. <laughs> so they're all trying to shoot like Steph. Listen, I, they're not modeling Kevin Durant. They're not modeling another player besides Steph. They ain't trying to get to that Steph elbow. Curry. They don't even want to shoot on the three point line. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I experienced that with my high school kids. But it's almost like they, that's what they see. Right. What they see is successful. He is going in. But what they don't see is they don't see the hours he put in the gym. They don't see he's in the gym shooting a thousand shots a day. You know, they don't see that part. They just see the game where he's making these miraculous shots. And they, you know, and, and, and it's our job to teach them like, okay, you want to get like that? Okay. Get in there and work. Get in there and shoot a thousand shots. After a hundred, you ready to go home. Mm-hmm. That's why you can't, you can't do a step. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They not paying them $200 million for nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just what they see, man. It's just what they see. You know, they, they just like, like, like G said, they don't, they might as well throw the mid range out. That's why I like SGA for, for OKC. Mm. It's like he, he, he going MVP. Like he just, if if I had a vote, I would vote for yeah, him. Yeah, real talk. If I had a vote, I would yeah. vote for him. Real he talk. might MVP of the league this year. No doubt. I, I I think it's hard to – I like Nikola Jokic. I like his game. I like what he's done this season. I think he's won MVP that way. And what Shea has done for the Oklahoma City Thunder from being a, a playing tournament team last year to now being the number one team in the Western Conference and averaging over 30 points, I think it's it's just hard for me not for him to get the award. If you're thinking about trying to reward somebody, the most valuable player, that's how that looks. You're a playing tournament team the next year, the number one seed in the Western Conference. We're not talking about the East. We're talking about the West. Right. And if, to me, it's like if he's not the MVP, it's like, dang, what is the league doing? The number one seed, man. Playing, playing team. And swap my Pelicans. Seed, that's not easy. Like you said, in the NBA, let alone the West. No doubt. Right. That's not easy. T, I got a question for you. And I want like kind of like flip the script because um you've been coaching a, a long, a long time. I've been coaching a while. And I've seen guys that have gotten opportunities to move up into the administration, but they're on the cusp of that championship or you got that good hey man that we know this this crew gonna be good in like two years. So I I'm I don't, I don't wanna jump in the administration because I can't do it. To see you be in the administration, head coach of one organization, defensive coordinator of another organization, what type of time management? (laughs) (laughs) What type of conversations at home? With the family? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And, And like, what type of like motivation 
like like keeps you keeps you going because like um, my wife is in administration well she's at, at the district level now you know the phone don't stop <laughs> as an associate head coach of the dc the phone don't stop for one group of kids but well, you the you the head coach of another organization the phones don't stop from that group of kids plus scheduling this setting up recruits for boom 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 where does t howard find the time to just be t howard but also give the 110 percent to every Tough. little hat that you wear what's the blueprint for i guess it's 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 for each his own first of all i'm not a I'm not a real guy that got to be in the limelight. I don't have to do this. I don't have to go out. I'm a, I'm a regular. If I wasn't my off day, you know what I do? I sit in the recline and watch games. I watch TV all day. Um, You know what? My family, they understand that. They understand, like, how passionate I am. Mm-hmm. They understand how this is part of me, part of my life, especially my kids. You know, especially my kids. Um, You know, my daughter. You know, she graduated this year from car. Shout out to her. She's Congratulations, no. Um Shout out to her. Yeah. If if we lose a game, like 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 a couple of years ago, we lost in the semifinals to McMahon. You know, and she came to the back. You would have thought she was playing. She was crying so hard. You know, and and it and it kind of like ah, she really understands. Yeah, like, she, yeah. She, you know, I was like, baby, why you crying? You know, she said, because, dad, I wanted y'all to win. So, you know, I have to support, you know, right. my family. And they they yeah. understand that. Uh, we get our time in. You know, we get our time in. Um, my daughter was an athlete. She played volleyball. My baby son, he plays baseball right now. Um, So they understand, you know, like, that's daddy. You know, daddy coaches, blah, 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 and all that. But, they get their time too. You know, it probably don't appear that way, or, or, but they get their time too. I also, they are part of what you do, the basketball yeah. team. They are part of the football program. You know, my son, he's been there since he was in diapers, you know, running around there. Mm-hmm. If you go look at a couple of the championship trophies, I guarantee you, you'll see him in quite a few of them, you know. So I include them, you know, in that, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, my wife, you know, she, she behind me a hundred percent. So, you know, she under, she understands, you know? So like I say, once again, I'm blessed because I understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. You may have a wife or a kid who don't understand that, you know what I'm saying? But, but, you know, I've been blessed to have people around me who, who understand like, look, this this him, you know what I'm saying? If you mess with this, you might not get a, 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 a nice guy, you know? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I'm blessed, man, you know? So I can't, I can't complain about nothing. Just give my TNT and popcorn, baby. That, that's something. That's something I've been. I've been struggling with. Yeah, I, I want to like for like you know, because because we like we like we like to give like our, the truth. I guess like you know, because it might be somebody out there struggling. So like for like a young coach. Yeah. <laughs> it's volunteer. Just being, just being you know, just, yes, but but like that's for for like for a young I mean, coach, doing what he doing, right? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but I got, got it going on. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got my hat off, but <laughs> it ain't all bad. Yeah, <laughs> but for like a young coach that like like that just getting in there and like how do they like what would be the T Howard advice of hey man, this is how you get this is how you get your family bought in mm-hmm. to yeah. what you about to do. Because like we all know it. If if you in a relationship and you and you passionate about something and that person ain't they don't have to be fully passionate, but if they don't understand they don't your passion, your vision, your drive. World. It's don't. gonna pull you down. So like something's gonna either you are gonna lose yourself or you are gonna lose your passion. But to to have it both, like that, you know, like I'm blessed to have to have that situation. So like, what would be your advice to like, hey, this is how you build to the to to this to this level? You definitely gotta have balance. Oh, uh, you definitely gotta have balance. Um, uh, you know the communication. Part has to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, they just gotta. I don't even. I don't think it's a. I don't think if it's a right or a wrong or a certain way to do it. I just think it's between those people. Like like how how we gonna do this? And then y'all come up with a way how mm-hmm. y'all gonna do it that that works for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I can sit here and suggest this, this, and that. That don't mean it's gonna work for right. The next, that's a good mm-hmm. point. You know, the next group, you know. So. I just think you have to figure that out. And that's what anything, that's what anything, you just have to figure it out. 
whatever is best for the situation. The situation. And then you just go with it, you know. Um, but you do have to have a little balance. I do that. You can't just be all sports and no family. You know, you got to, you know, you got to split it up, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Now, I think this is key, right? Because if you go to a park ball game, if you go to a middle school game, if you go to a high school game, if somebody is coaching that particular sport, it could be baseball, no matter what it is, say they haven't played that particular sport. You know, you have people that say, he ain't never played that sport before. What are you doing coaching it? Right? Yeah. What would your advice be to somebody that is passionate about a particular sport and wants to coach it, but they they, they might have not played it at the high school level or the college level? And they want to be successful like you've been. What would, what would your advice be? Good question. It's crazy how I even started coaching football. And you might be like, there's no way. <laughs> um, Coach Luke, I know a lot yeah. of we know Coach Jabal yeah. Luke. Um, he, took, he, he got the job at Carr. Um, we had a guy, a, a little secondary coach guy uh, named Will Young. He couldn't coach for whatever reason. I can't remember. So, you know, Coach Luke was like this, man, listen, man, I need a DB coach. I said, I'm like this, Coach. Want me to ask around? He's like, no, I want you to do it. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What you talking about, Coach? I want you to do it. And Coach Bosch Luke is a DB coach. So he was just like, I'm going to help you. I'm going to be there with you. You know, I'm going to help you, blah, blah, blah. I just need somebody to be with him. That's how he, that's how he sold it to him. I just need somebody to supervise. Right. I'm going to come there with you, and we're going to coach. I'm going to really coach him. So I was like, all right, you know, I'm at the school. I'll be there. Jaluk, my guy. All right, I can do that for you. Mm-hmm. He never came over. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like jam. So <laughs> he sold him a bill of dreams. I'm committed to this. So I, I got I to gotta see it through. Now. I'm committed to it. I got to see it through. So, you know, I just start, I just start calling people, talking to people. You know, having a conversation, how you do this, how you do that's what you should do. And I and I just I just did a crash course and and I just got the basics down. You know what I'm saying? I got the basics down. Good thing we were kinda like revamping the program. So we were starting at the bottom. Mm. So I didn't stick out like a sore thumb like everybody else is progressing, <laughs> but the, the DVs don't right, look too hot. Right, right, right. So you know, I was fortunate enough to be in the little re- rebuilding stage of the whole little program, you know. And you know, I invested. I invested in it, man. I invested my time. I, I learned the, the, you know, I learned the craft. You know what I'm saying? I, I got it. Well, my guy, you know, BJ, you know, BJ Brown. He was the defensive coordinator. Well, he decides to go into administration. Mm-hmm. You know, he want to be a principal, so he can't coach. Him. So I'm like, boom. So then here comes your boy Jaluk again. All right, you gonna be the DC? Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's <laughs> one thing to. <laughs> Right. But you want to be responsible for the whole defense. Right. Hey, call it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, man. BJ, your friend, man, just go over there. Just go over there, learn everything. He gonna teach you this and all that, blah, blah, blah. And 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 G you know this. BJ got a hundred things going on, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Every time I went over there, he was like, just hold up, bro. I'm coming. Just hold up, bro. I'm coming. Hold up, bro. I'm coming. So I was like, man, I don't commit it to this again. So I gotta figure it out. I gotta figure it out. So, you know, again, you know, I'm talking to people, crash course, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? And I figured it out. I figured it out. I figured it out. I figured it out. You know what I'm saying? With the help, you know, I ain't doing it by myself with the help of a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I don't want to name them. I don't want to leave nobody out. Right, I figured right. figured it out. And I just took off with it, man. Coaching. And, and here's why I think I took off with it. Because I, I love coaching, man. It's a passion for me. It ain't so much that I'm coaching basketball or coaching football. It's just the fact that coaching to get a kid to believe in himself, right? Get him to reach his potential. It, it's 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 mm-hmm. it's like a million dollars. Can't put a price on it. It's like a million dollars. So that's why he's that's why he's able to throw you in hot grease. <laughs> and, and and I don't know if he saw that in me or not, but he helped me bring that out of me. Mm-hmm. You know, bring that out of me. You know, the passion, like the coaching passion I have in me, man. If if somebody go watch this. My son plays baseball, right? So I'm out there. I'm 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 learning it. Like do this, do this, do that. I feel I can go 
coach a baseball team. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Real talk. I know everything. Right. But because my son playing, I, I had to learn it. You know, yeah. To help him out, you know, to yeah, this is why they say do this, son. And my son is very inquisitive, you know. Daddy, why they told me to do this? Why they told me to do that, you know? So, coaching, man, I, I, I tell anybody this. If you take coaching away from me, you might as well take the breath out of my body, you know? Ooh. Powerful. That's how serious I am about this, you know? Ooh. Easy. Uh, you look through your hot grease. A big. Go learn DBs. I don't know what I'm doing. Still ain't come help. <laughs> He's in Florida right now, still. <laughs> He'll text you though. <laughs> oh my God, that that's that's crazy, bro. But I I I don't think that works if you're not that passionate about coaching. No doubt. I I don't think if you're that passionate about coaching, that don't. If like you're a, doing it for the wrong reason. If you're doing, yeah. If somebody throws you in something and you're just not passionate, I don't think you know. But if, I don't think if you're passionate about it, it it's not going to manifest because uh, other th- your the, the, the distractions of life. Are going to take you away from wanting to learn and get into it. You're going to find other things to want to do that. I can't do this. He just threw me in. He said, You're going to have me and go help me. Now. Instead of you want to figure things out on your own, you're going to be like, You're going to go find a distraction that you are more attracted to. Right. But since you were attracted to coaching and just your passion, it's like you gravitated to want to figure out how to do this and how to get these kids to perform at, at a certain level and not stick out like a sore thumb. For good Lord. Yeah. Oh, um, man. I- <laughs> I know we we usually get like we get to this part in, in like in uh in the favorite section when we get ready to shut shut, shut it down. But I just gotta tip my hat to you because as a DC, as somebody who been coached like who coached on both sides of the football field, I understand how hard your job is in basketball. And what I mean that saying is I can sit there and be like, man, it, I watch y'all this 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 way back when a meet and Carl would have they they regular spring spring scrim, and I sat there and I watched. Hey, Speedy gonna get off, but we gonna take this kid away. Speedy got off, that kid got taken away. Hey, Gerald gonna get off, but nobody else about to eat on 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 the D line. And I'm like, okay, and like, and I watched y'all say, hey, Tay not gonna get off, but. Everybody was like, okay, okay, like this, they're, they're good. Like you could do that in football because it's eleven and you it, it's a boundary and you can you can say anybody but this one. And it works. Basketball is five. And you can you you can say, man, hey, we not gonna let him in the lane. But this kid got a 42 inch vertical and he taking off from the free throw line. It's like, oh, that go the lane. You know, like and like to be successful at that. Just talk about how coaching basketball made you a better football coach, but also coaching football made you a better basketball coach. Watch, I coach football under Coach Bryce. Mm-hmm. Good luck. He's a. If not the best, he's one of the best coaches in the state of Louisiana. Yeah. When he's dealing and coaching the kids and trusting them, and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there like I'm one of the kids. And it's crazy because I coached him in football. Right. I coached him in football. And, you know, I, I, I mean, I listen, you can learn from anybody. Correct. You know, and I find myself sitting there picking up things from him, learning, you know, watching him. And I take some of the things and I incorporate in basketball. You know, it's two different sports, but you could take some of the things you do and I incorporate in basketball, in which has made me a better basketball coach by coaching under him in football, you know. So, you know, I, I've become a lot patient, you know, in basketball. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It might don't appear that way in the game, <laughs> but I become more, more patient, you know, because I watch him. You know, he, he's he's a very patient coach. He he knows the hard work that he puts in is going to eventually pay off, mm-hmm. pay off at some point. It might not be the first quarter or the first game, 
but it, it eventually pay off. It, you know, you trust the process. That's 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 a big thing we say around that. Just trust the process. You know, and I and I carry those. You know, I I, I ain't gonna say I steal it, but I steal it, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I incorporate it in basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, just trust it. You know, I I've never said that in basketball. Just trust the process. But I find myself saying a lot of things to the basketball program or the basketball kids that I may have heard in the football program. So it kind of like, it goes hand in hand, you know, oh, um, the basketball part of it, you know, it, it enables me to, you know, like in basketball, I, I, I watch coach Bryce, let his coaches coach. So guess what? I let my coaches, you know, mm -hmm. coach, what you think coach, you going to run this. All right, let's do it. Let's work on it. You know, but back then, I thought I had to like, look, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. I thought I had to, you, you know, you want things to come out right. So you, you, you micromanage. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that's one of the things I picked up from coach. You know, he never micromanage. He let you coach your position. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, as far as defense, he don't even run in. He don't come on that side. He, he might just be like this coach. You, 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 you be good with whatever. Yeah, coach, we got it. All right, let's go. You know, so he he trusts his coaches. Right, it's a big deal. I picked up as far as basketball. Game. The last thing I want to ask you before we get ready to get into T. Howard's favorites, y'all haven't been in a state championship in three years. You know, in my area, a lot of car fans, a lot of people admire what y'all do and admire the culture y'all created over the last decade. Um, in your mind. What you think has contributed to the reason why you went full street, but haven't been back in the last three years? And what has to happen for y'all to get back to GG? You know, when we was winning, when we, when we won the first, we went back to back. We won three in a row. I, I remember Coach saying, I told you, no, eventually we're going to lose. <laughs> and then there, nobody gonna understand why we lose, you know. Um, we're doing the same thing we've been doing. We're doing the same things we've been doing. The, the little full year you know, mm -hmm. we're doing it. It's just hard, man. It, it, it's just hard. It's just if we've been right there, we've been at the door. It ain't like we ain't been there. It's right been at the door, you know. So. Some things, you know, y'all, y'all coaches. Some things yeah. gotta happen. You, you gotta have some lugs. Mm -hmm. You know, injury free. You gotta be right. injury free. Matchups. You know, things gotta mm -hmm. go your way. You know what I'm saying? I, I, we lost to Acadiana in the semifinals, right? Yeah. They're a running team. We're a passing team. I, I remember this. I, somewhere in the third quarter, they scored on a running play. They was up a touchdown, and when it was time for us to get the ball, it just started raining, just <clears throat> pulling down rain. What's the odds? We drew an intercept. They returned it for a touchdown. Stop raining. <laughs> stop raining. Just stop raining. So I'm like this. The football guys are smiling on Acadiana. I'm looking in the sky to see if somebody from Acadiana had a rain button or something. You know? Yeah, so they did. It's just, it's, you know, things just got to happen for you, you know. So like I said, we've been right there. You know, we're knocking on the door, Um, you know. We got some good hungry kids this year. We they busting their tail. They working hard, you know. Um, I think we're gonna have a shot. You know, we're gonna have a shot to make a run. Um, we playing in this Catholic league, the SEC. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, so like Coach said, we got to be healthy. You know, things got to happen. Like it's not easy. That's what I want people to understand. The first one wasn't easy. Let alone to go win four. You know, it's not easy. It's, it's not easy. But you know. We, we we got we got a great coach, you know, Coach Brown here. He a great leader, man. He he makes it so believable for us to believe that we're gonna win every year, you know. So and I and I think it starts from the top, you know. You, you know, if you get a good leader and then you get everybody to follow and buy in, you know, we got a lot of camaraderie with our coaches and our kids, you know. We just go out there and we work, man. You know, we have no big eagles out there, you know. So I just think it's whatever your program and the foundation that it's made up of, you know, it, it gives you a chance 
you know, to have a chance to win. And at the end of the day, all you want is a chance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's it. I still think at times what happens is I think what y'all been able to create this decade is y'all become y'all went from being the hunters to the hunted. And that's just the reality. Yeah. When 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 Edna Carr steps on the football field now. That's y'all, everybody's Super Bowl. Everybody's like state championship. It's everybody's state championship. So to me, at some point in time, when you keep getting everybody's best, at some point in time, you got to play your best for some time you do it. It gets harder and harder because you're getting everyone's best. Because complacency come, sets in at some point, especially yeah. when you're dealing with 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year old kids. Correct. And so what has started to happen is that these kids, you know, we playing car, we got to be A1. They start paying attention to detail. They practice in it. They practice all day. Bro, what is they? All they walk on. We bringing the best out of them. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. at some point in time, it, 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 it starts to get hard. Because you're getting everyone's A plus game, where if you have a B plus game, and it's not just that's just the game, you could end up losing because you got the A plus and you're getting everybody's A plus. I just think that y'all y'all in a place in the program. It's like being Nick Saban, baby. I'm just put it is what it is. When you play Bama with Nick Saban with the coach for 17 seasons, they the hunt. You yep. you're getting everyone's best game. Yep. And at some point in time, it just gets difficult to get to a national champion. Yet the, y'all are the Alabama football team for this state. Okay. It is what it is. Yeah, no, appreciate it. Hey, look. We, we, we play the we play we, we play teams and, and, the, and the team when they beat us, you could hear them out of the game. I told you. I told you. I told you we could do it. They 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 be so emotional. Of course. They human too. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so <laughs> yeah, it's a challenge. It's a yeah. challenge, and and it's a challenge that, especially when you're dealing with kids. Yeah. Yes, but it's a challenge our coaching staff and kids are up for. You yeah. know, year in and year out. So we we understand that. That's mm. that's that's the number one thing. We understand that that they're bringing it. You know, mm. so just got to bring it back. And I, that's, that's I, and I think that's what the public got to understand because when I was at a meet, we. We won the we, we my my team that we won when we won our first um, championship in eighteen. Then the next year, we went to the to, we went to the semifinals, lost, and then we lost in the quarterfinals. The team that beat us in the quarterfinals, that coach was like, "Hey, like and we, we lost on the last on the last play of the, play of the game." Kind of it was similar to like how y'all when y'all played Karen Crow. The whole first half we just lined up wrong. To a wing T team, and we couldn't see it because our, our, our device went down. And Dang. once we saw it, it, was like, boom, they didn't score again until we had to let them score because we ran out of timeouts. And we still was like the ball. Right. When the kid put his foot down, he if he wore a size seven, we in the dome. But he wore a size eight. So <laughs> we out. But the coach told us, man, I've been watching. I watched all y'all games for two years. Cause y'all, cause like when you a program, you don't have to change nothing, mm-hmm. right? When the, when the foundation is built, boom, 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 nothing has to change. You just, all right, the door, hey, a new door now needs to be put in, new tile got to be put down. The foundation is foundation, so you got a coach that's sitting there, oh, we in a bracket, doom, doom, doom. Like he don't care about no other. Like his his best, and for 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 y'all, just like it was for us, we're just. Whoever whoever it is, we not look at the head. We gonna take care of it week by week, and then but karma was on them. We had to they had to play us in the state championship the year after, and we ain't had no problem lining up then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still I still I still hold that to heart because I felt it, I don't want to say what I want to say, but I felt like because of our persuasion and they persuasion, you know, for you to get on. For you to get on, like, our kid just got named the Heisman Trophy winner. And you get on there, talk about it. Oh, yeah, you know, but he not playing. We just come down here to get beignets and, and hoist a trophy. That did it. <laughs> that did it. Bullet, bullet to ball material. Without, <laughs> without needing it. Right. <laughs> now we got to get in a T. Howard's favorites, man. Here we go. Here we go. Damn, I know the answer to this. Got to ask it. <laughs> Favorite Hooper All time No matter what level Go Damn <laughs> you know I'm talking about Coach Ace you know I'm talking about AB baby KB Can we end the show Rain Walsh Stop it Can we end the show The disrespect Mamba <laughs> Favorite sneaker All time John 
What number? Any, any, any particular number? Fours. Fours. Ooh. I like the fours. I like the fours. Favorite movie of all time? No matter the genre. Favorite. Awesome. Fry. The good one. Classic. Classic. What are you about? 95? 94. 94? First. Yeah, yeah. 94. Huh? Pre. I was in four grade. grade. That's crazy. Mama you won't let me watch it. I just I, I watch could, it. I couldn't do it yeah, either. Just like House Party. No doubt. <laughs> Favorite rapper all time? Jada Kiss. For real? Yes, I will take that. Thank <laughs> God. See, I ain't know Jada Kiss. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Kiss. Yeah. I'm the biggie. Yes. That's a big, Damn. big guy. That's, that's the big. first we had on him. Kiss. That's a biggie guy. Yeah. That's, I, that's, I, I, that's, I, yeah I mess with Kiss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, yeah. Yeah. Data. Right. Oh my God. Right. Favorite coach of all time, no matter what level, that made the most impact on you. Why? He was a he was an awesome basketball coach, right? But he was a great man that understood how to deal with everybody every individually different. Mm. I think that's what made him so unique, you know. And I learned that when I started, you know, you don't see that when you're playing. Right. But then you coach inside of you pay attention to how he deals with this player, that player, that player, that player. It's fair, but it's different. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and I thought that, and, and, and listen, I'm still trying to figure that part out, mm-hmm. how, to, how to be fair Treating everybody different. Mm-hmm. He did it easy. He did it easy, and not only players, people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He, and and I just think that was very very unique about him. You know, he could deal with the superstar, the kid that wasn't so good, the the kid that had the attitude problem, the kid that was soft, the kid that was tough, the kid that was emotional. He just knew how to deal with. Just know how to deal with everybody. And then at the end of the day. It wasn't like, oh, you treat him better than me. Mm-hmm. No. He looked, it was fair, you know? Right. He right. was there with that kid that, in his way, that he could connect with him. Right. It didn't come off like it's disingenuous. Like right, that. right. Gotta connect with everybody. Man. Right. Favorite place to visit? Uh, Like I said, I'm not a big guy that travels a lot. Uh, Luxon. <laughs> Back away. Mm-hmm. Vegas. 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 <laughs> Vegas. 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 I thought you was going to say Toronto. Vegas, mm-hmm. just because I like to play blackjack. <laughs> they, be, they be having stuff in the slots. They be having stuff in the airport. They can let you know you're in town, boy. <laughs> See y'all the plane. No need, no need to the airport, baby. Two part question right here. Toughest player you ever had to guard, no matter if it was a college or high school. Toughest player you had the game plan for as a coach. Toughest black at the guard in high school when I was driving with this guy named Bill Lee. Mm-mm. 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 He played at East Jeff. He was a uh, he was from Indiana, big Indiana kid. I think his dad had got a uh, assistant job at you know whatever. So mm. that's how he got down here. But he played at East Jeff. Um, I mean, hard nose. He he was Steph Curry before he was Steph Curry. <sighs> hard nose kid, you know. Um, you know, and, and like I said, that was years ago. So a lot of people, I'm sure if you ask people in my area, be like, yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. hardest you know, I had that game plan. Man, you better say his name. Come on, man, stop playing. <laughs> stop playing, T. Oh, so I had the game plan. What team? He left-handed. Is he left-handed? Basketball. We talking about basketball. I'm, I'm oh, I'm about to, yeah, I'm about to say. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to, that's what I was thinking. That's easy. Yeah. I mean, he's shooting from that. Parking <laughs> <laughs> lot, <live> Jesus. <laughs> Maybe funny story. You know, we took him in the ditch and played the first time at and we don't got me killed. He must have like fought. So the next time he played the district, they came to the car. 
So I was like this. I don't even care who won the game. And you are not getting nowhere close to the far, right? So we, we I mean, as soon as he, as soon as he took two dribbles toward half court, we double team, made him give it up, you know. And it, fortunate enough, the other kids weren't hit, right? So I, I, he might have had like maybe nine or ten points. I'm not like might have finished with like nine or ten. Points. Damn! Wow! So he came, he came to the bench. He was like this, coach. Can you please stop double team? Please stop double team. <laughs> that ain't no basketball. Please stop. Double team. <laughs> He would to the bench and say that I was like, I yes, got it, work. got it, got it, got it. And we ended up winning. We ended up winning by like two or three points. We ended up winning. The double team is effective, brother. You'll never see nothing less. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. That's the type of mindset I'll be on. Oh, yeah. You're not coming to hand school forward in my gym. No, I'm not sorry. at all. I'm so sorry. you cross half court, dog. You're going to get involved. in the social media era? Oh, no. Hell no. Hell no. You're going to go viral. Now, favorite football player of all time? Football coach, too. Favorite football player of all time? Uh, Fair, go on. Okay, but you got his Heisman Trophy back. Got, got yeah. Trophy back. Boy, boy, got his Heisman Trophy back and still suing the NCAA. Hey, you can't go wrong. <laughs> Give that man his money. I don't blame him. Give it to me, G. Say fair coach. No, 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 no. Favorite football player. Favorite football player. Favorite comedian of all time. Come on, mm-hmm. Fred. Come on, Fred. Uh, okay. Go on. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's Cat a good one. That was funny as a motherfucker. What? He a Bernie Mac guy. Yeah, yeah, I ain't mad at Cat. As long, as long as nobody didn't, didn't creep up to 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 my stand, I got it by land side right now. So. Yeah, Bernie Mac been winning. Bernie, like, Bernie Mac been, been winning. Bernie Mac been holding the truth. Cat yeah. Williams got a couple. Got some votes. Too. Got some votes. But Bernie Mac been Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Mac amongst yeah us three right now. I like Cat Williams because it's almost like a smart kind. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that that uh that sarcasm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He 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 be having. It. I, I give credit. That, I give it that credit. If T. Howard wasn't coaching, what would T. Howard be doing with his life? That's that's a hard question. <laughs> the man said he wouldn't be breathing early. <laughs> <laughs> Take his breath out his body. I never even thought of doing anything else. I'm, I'm I'm dead serious. I never even thought wow. of doing anything else. You know, I was in college. I was gonna be a um. I was in social studies. I was gonna be a social studies teacher because Coach Rock was a social studies teacher. You know? Right, he definitely my mentor. So I wanted to do that. Social studies teacher and coach. You know what I'm saying? I I, I couldn't even tell you. I ain't the ideas of doing anything else. <laughs> no plan B. You know? No. No plan B. All plan E. You got to work. Yeah. You know, so I'm sure if if the opportunity was taken away from me, I'm sure I'll figure something out. Mm-hmm. But I just never had to, to thank or to do anything else, you know? No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Oh, man. Man. Man, man I appreciate you coming on the podcast, T, bro. Uh, been talking about it for a while. Uh, shit. I've been knowing you. Over 20 years now. It's been, yeah, it's been over 20 years for sure. I remember meeting you at, at Brendan and Norman apartment. You was on the couch right after the Brendan football game. And, and man, we've been good friends ever since. Uh, you know, I always tell you all the time, man, I appreciate how y'all accepted me and y'all car program, man, having me around, treat me like family. And I've taken so many different things from y'all program and what you do and what Bryce do and what Norman do. And the list goes on and, and brought it to not only my kids, but kids that I coach, kids that I mentor. So y'all have made a big, big impact on how I operate as a man. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm forever indebted to y'all, man. So, you know, appreciate that, dog. Yeah, I appreciate you guys for having me. Oh, absolutely. You know, having me on. We know G Sports is the, is the Shannon Sharp or oh, uh, Edna Carr. Go ahead, yeah, man. Yeah. Go ahead. Hey, listen, it, look, look, but, but you know what they say? They say I be hating on them. <laughs> How? Listen, listen. <laughs> how sway? But listen, listen, but listen, how? listen, listen, listen. Shannon got got his hate on on the Lakers. He every blue moon. Look, he'll say something like this. <laughs> we'll be about to play somebody but like this. Hey, two touchdowns, two touchdowns. What are you talking about? Like, where you get that from? But we figured it out. Is this his way to get us riled up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see you like this. I would do best with y'all. I knew y'all. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't, oh, oh, they'll get mad if I see something like this. I'll be like this. Y'all going to win. Y'all ain't gonna, y'all ain't gonna blow them out, dude. <laughs> and they'll be like this: "What? We ain't gonna blow them out." And Man. they take that so personal. I remember at your birthday party. <laughs> this is the, this is the, this is this is when we went out when we all went paintball because it was the. That's when Jared tore his ACL. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's the first. it up. Hey, like ten minutes in. <laughs> tore it up. <laughs> tore his ACL. That was the year that y'all played. The, Y'all had played Easter the uh, this had to be like a shy senior. I think it was. For him and Cedric Senior? Cedric Van Prince. Yeah. yeah. And that's what the hell it was thinking. Man, it was Brendan, 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 Brendan and, and the G were going at it and Brendan was like, You know Easter should have beat y'all. And that turned into a whole the like then he asked me a question. I was like, hey. Man, well, I ain't gonna lie to you. Without Ronnie, man, Ronnie set the tone for y'all. So you said without Ronnie, we wouldn't have won. I'm not saying, but I'm saying, dog. you know, the, like the the footage is out there. It was <laughs> dog, dog, dog. If I don't say they gonna blow somebody out, that's like saying they look they gonna lose. And then look, I be on the sideline covering the game. Say they start the, the team. I thought they wouldn't go blow out, and they blow them out. They be like this. You did this. <laughs> you did this. That's how you be. You, be like that. you did this, G. You did this. You did this to them people. And you can see it too, cause he, he looked at you like, like, like. You can tell that he like. I'm not trying to pay attention to the iPad, but at the corner of his eye, when he come out the break, hey, we going cougar black. All right. You know, we good. We good. All right. And turn and give that little quick little like like motherfucker. <laughs> so for everybody out there who got blown out by adding the call, G Sports is completely responsible. Make sure y'all email. Y'all him. Him. Make sure y'all add him. Him. <laughs> add him. I don't mind. Go Ta- follow him. Subscribe. Take the score and put and put like and say you did this to us. I'm good. I'm good. It's, All, like, good. it's like it's like Gladiator when they when they killed the fake um Achilles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all on G Sports. Y'all lose about forty. It was G Sports' fault. I'm good with it. But yeah, T man, we definitely got to get you back on in the near future, man. Uh, good luck to y'all, man. I know y'all y'all just started spring. Hopefully, y'all stay injury free. Absolutely, man, man. Y'all get back to GG, man. Bring another state championship to the Edna Car family, bro. Appreciate it, man. No Appreciate doubt. It. Y'all already know what it is. Listen, subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend or a friend. Family podcast again. If you're on Facebook, Family Podcast. If you're on YouTube, Family Podcast. If you're on TikTok. Fan View Podcast. If you on X, X, it's still Fan View Nola. Don't forget to follow G Sports. You know, I can't help y'all if y'all need to rock. We all got devices. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button. We on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, you name it. We are there. Another episode again. We won't Fanview. stop. We can't stop. Won't stop. Y'all already know what it is. It's Fan View Podcast. No diddy. No diddy. <laughs> no diddy. <laughs> Step Construction is here for you with a brand new offer. We now provide affordable storage sheds. Stop wasting your money on overpriced storage units and portable containers. Step Construction can provide you with a custom shed that will fit your budget and storage needs. So contact Step Construction today at 504-340-5809 for your own personal quote. Let us help you take the next step at Step Construction. It's that boy Fred, host of FanView Podcast. Tune in to the NOTN app. We days, 3.30 for the FanView Podcast. Go to NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com to watch more episodes of FanView Podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and watch.